you ever find yourself going to sleep and you can't stop thinking about negative thoughts. Hello, my successful and healthy earthlings, Mihaila Ragush here, naturopath and founder of the Natural Health Podcast. Today, I'm going to share with you just how negative thoughts before bed affect your sleep. We're going to go and talk about bedtime negative thinking, how negative thoughts affect your sleep, and then three tips how you can sleep better. And at the end of this episode, I'm going to give you an opportunity to join a success and health oriented community by clicking below and joining the Natural Health Newsletter community. Welcome to the Natural Health Podcast, where we bring awareness to sustainable health in the business hustle space. Natural Health Podcast is perfect for the high-performing business-minded individuals who want to work with their biochemistry to achieve success and optimal health. It's Mondays with Mahela. That's right, me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Absolutely love, 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 and appreciate your support. On Mondays, I'm here to provide you a simple, savvy, and sustainable health hacks to optimize your health. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about negative thinking and sleep or even insomnia, right? Think about the last time that you were laying in bed and you couldn't fall asleep. Think about the thoughts that came to you. Usually, most of the time, these thoughts are thoughts about worry, negative thoughts of what if, what if scenarios are played through your head, Sometimes even some really dark negative thoughts follow our our mind just goes ballistic thinking about these things. Is it normal or how does it affect your sleep? Look, these are the things that I'm going to talk about in today's episode. If you want to know how it actually affects your sleep, stick to it. But let's talk about bedtime repetitive negative thinking. What is it and how and why does it occur? I know myself that when I lay down to go to bed and when I can't sleep, which is rare, I think, you know, I'm pretty fortunate for that sense. But when I do, I think about what's happening to my dog. <laughs> is he okay in, in, his, in his bed? Is something going to happen to him? Is my partner okay? Is my family okay? Um, what's going to happen tomorrow? Uh, how's my business going? Am I losing money? Am I gaining money? What's happening around the world? All of these thoughts all of a sudden get dumped into my brain. It's like, wow, like why couldn't they come earlier when I had time and, and energy to deal with these and process it? Why are they coming now, right? And and the thing is, is why do we think about these things before bed? We think about our finances, how our business is doing, our family, the world, our property, you know, even death. Some questions even cross us. Why are we alive? <laughs> All of these questions can cross our mind before bed. And research has actually demonstrated an association between repetitive negative thinking and a variety of sleep related measures, including insomnia, which is doesn't really come as a surprise when you think about it, right? But what is repetitive negative thinking? It's been defined as excessive and repetitive thinking about negative topics that is experienced as difficult to control. Because certain forms of repetitive thinking actually may be constructive, a definition aspect of repetitive thinking is that it is dysfunctional, that it is instructive, difficult to disengage from, and unproductive. So these thoughts that come across us are not productive. Uh, we cannot stop it, uncontrollable, and it just comes out of nowhere which is quite interesting, right? So there's been multiple studies done on this, and I'm going to talk about one soon, which goes into detail about what effects it has on us. But multiple studies has actually identified that people who experience depression are more prone to rumination and repetitive thoughts of shame, anger, regret, and sorrow. So a, a study done in 2015, July, named depressive rumination the default mode network and the dark matters of clinical neuroscience is actually published in the journal of biological psychiatry where they did a meta-analysis of previous research and identified that depressive rumination so thoughts are more likely to emerge 
when the firing and increased cerebral blood flow to a specific region of the cerebrum called subnigal prefrontal cortex, also called as SGPFC for all those people who want to know more about it, synchronizes with the default mode network, DMN. So this default mode network is, um, is a network of brain regions that are active when your mind wanders and you find yourself daydreaming, reminiscing, or lost in self thought right this is kind of what happens before we go to bed so researchers actually believe that increased connectivity between the subnigal prefrontal cortex and the default mode network can backfire by creating a vicious cycle of rumination in people who are experiencing depression this is specific to depression but if it has a link there imagine the link also right so depressive rumination can feel like you're a lab rat literally running on a wheel. You're like running, running on that wheel. When is it going to stop? All these thoughts, negative thoughts, finances, work, family. It's like a running wheel, right? So how can you break this cycle of negative rumination? But based with this research, based on a simple split brain up down model between the cerebrum and the cerebrum, which houses the SG. PFN that I mentioned earlier, they believe that activities engage the cerebrum and unclamp the prefrontal cortex might be directly linked to breaking obsessive or compulsive ruminations. These include climbing trees or balancing on a beam, which is absolutely interesting. So I thought kind of like I'll start off this podcast by talking a little bit about these rumination thoughts and these ongoing thoughts. So this person, the psychiatrist I believe, is saying that for us to break this cycle of these ongoing negative thoughts is climb a tree <laughs> because this actually does something to your brain, it unclamps it um, and or even balancing on a beam. So I'm not here saying that if you can't sleep, you're laying late at night that you go climb a tree in your backyard or in your neighbor's backyard or even balance on a beam, but hey, it may help, right? But let's go into the study that I found of how negative thoughts actually affect your sleep. This is so interesting. It blows my mind. And I love anything associated with sleep and finding out how it affects us. So this study was actually this year, a study published in 26th of April, 2021. Bedtime repetitive negative thinking moderates the relationship between psychological stress and insomnia. So they looked at 507 undergraduates. The current study demonstrates that the observed positive correlation between self-perceived stress and insomnia severity is moderated by the tendency to engage in repetitive negative thinking at bedtime. So findings from this study suggest that insomnia treatments that can stimulously reduce stress and address bedtime repetitive negative thinking may be optimal. So these individuals who have insomnia, they're suggesting that they actually look at reducing their stress and also addressing the repetitive negative thinking. How do you address the repetitive negative thinking? Climb a tree. <laughs> well, that's what that previous study said, right? Because this can all lead to depression or depression can lead to repetitive negative thinking. So you have to think about these individuals. If you do have repetitive negative thinking, are you depressed? Do you have too much inflammation in your brain? What is actually happening in your brain, right? There was also another study. Another study looked at repetitive negative thinking was associated with shorter sleep duration and delayed sleep time. This is key. Let me read that again to you. Repetitive negative thinking was associated with shorter sleep duration and delayed sleep timing. I have been blabbing on about sleep for years now. And if you know what effect a reduced sleep duration has, but also delayed sleep timing, you would understand why you would have repetitive negative thinking, right? Or vice versa. So essentially individuals who endorsed a preference for later sleep and activity times also reported more repetitive negative thinking. So if you're an evening chronotype for where you go to bed at like 1, 2, 3 a.m. or even midnight, you are more likely to have repetitive negative thinking. So you might actually be the individual that you're a morning, morning chronotype where you actually go to sleep about let's say 10 p.m. and then all of a sudden you get this email and you have to get back to your client and for whatever reason you stay up till midnight and then you get into bed and you think you're going to fall asleep exactly the same way that you do at 10 p.m. I'm here to tell you that it's not going to happen and you may get more repetitive negative thoughts. And that might mean shorter sleep time, that might mean inflammation in the brain, that might mean depression. It is all linked in. It is all linked in. So 
Essentially, these findings from this study suggest that repetitive negative thinking may be uniquely related to both sleep duration and timing. So if you get your sleep duration on point and your sleep timing correct, you may not have those repetitive negative thinking, you may not get that information in your brain, you may not get depressed, you may have productivity to an absolutely amazing level. So essentially, the shorter a person's sleep duration, the longer it took them to shift their attention away from negative stimulus which is so interesting. Results also indicated that bedtime and sleep duration may be contributors to repetitive negative thinking and that sleep disruptions may precede the onset of repetitive negative thinking. I don't know about you, but have you ever woken up and all of a sudden this negative thought comes on and you can't go back to sleep? So then you keep thinking about that negative thought and that negative thought leads to another negative thought and you feel useless, powerless. Well, why does that happen? Well, I spoke about earlier why that happens because of our brain regions, activations and so forth. But what can you do, right? That is the question, what can you do? Let's go into three tips to sleep better because that actually may assist with the repetitive negative thinking. Number one that I always talk about is root I know it sounds boring. It's not this amazing supplement that I'm here to tell you about. I'm here to talk to you about routine. Okay, routine. Because if you have routine and you go to bed at the same time, you wake up at the same time, which means your sleep duration is always the same, doesn't change, nor is it interrupted. Okay, so your sleep duration isn't interrupted, but neither is your timing, which then reduces your negative repetitive negative thinking at night right that's the number one thing number two is stress reduction techniques and one of the key ones here is breathing taking that deep breath in and out having a routine about your stress reduction techniques and these stress reduction techniques are not only just before bed they are throughout the whole day especially in the mornings during the day at night These occur throughout the whole day. They're not just before sleep, so you can sleep better, right? Number three, the last one is gratitude, right? If we're laying there and all we're thinking about is our finances, our business, our family, the world, if we show a bit of gratitude, it shifts our brain. If we show a little bit of gratitude, we change how we're thinking about a certain scenario, a certain situation, and we come into being more positive, more graceful, more, we don't have time to think about those negative thoughts, we move them into positive thoughts, right? I know it sounds a little bit hippy whippy whippy, but it is going to change your repetitive negative thinking because you can only think about a few things at once. I think even only one thing, right? And if you think about something positive, being like, wow, I'm so grateful for my current business. I'm so grateful for my clients. I am so grateful for my family. I'm so grateful for the world. You don't have time to really think about the negative stuff, right? So number one, routine. Number two, stress reduction techniques. And number three, gratitude. Combining all of these together is going to assist you to reduce repetitive negative thinking at bedtime but also going to assist you to sleep better because if you're sleeping better you'll have a less chance of having those repetitive negative thoughts before bedtime so it's like a bonus okay so there you have it a bit of information about how repetitive negative thinking actually impacts your sleep and yes it does it impacts your sleep dramatically shorter sleep duration and also timing goes off which has so many effects on your whole body your immune system your cognitive function and so forth Check out all my other episodes on sleep that I talk about because if you are thinking about negative thoughts before sleep, you are affecting your heart, you're affecting your immune system and so forth. If you know someone who would benefit from this video, please send this video to them, share it, do what you do best. Love, like, share, comment. 
um, subscribe to the Natural Health Podcast, do what you got to do. And if you want to join our health and success oriented community and get a newsletter sent to you every Friday with bonuses, specials from our guests, from our uh, products and so forth, and also get a summary of what's been happening during the week on Natural Health Podcast, join the newsletter below and you will be surprised with the goodies that are available there. Remember, the missing link between failure and success is your health. Content and information provided here is the opinion of Mahela Raguse and is for information purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. It is not intended to provide medical advice or take the place of medical advice or any current treatment you're undertaking. Consult your own medical professionals for any medical issues that you may be having. This entire disclaimer also applies to any guests or contributors to the Natural Health Podcast. It is advised that you consult your doctor or healthcare professional in relation to any health concerns you may be having. Mahela Raguse does not take responsibility for any health consequences which occur from a person listening, viewing, or reading this content. And in a circumstance, Circumstances shall the natural podcast, Mahela Raguse, any guests or contributors to the natural podcast, or any employees, associates, or affiliates of Mahela Raguse be responsible for damages arising from the information provided on the natural podcast. By listening to this podcast, you agree not to use this podcast as medical advice to treat any medical conditions in either yourself or others. Please note if you're taking prescription, do not stop your medication or start a new protocol, including but not limited to supplements diet lifestyle changes without consulting a doctor or healthcare professional. If you or any person has a medical concern, you should consult with your healthcare provider or seek other professional medical advice. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something that you have read or heard on the natural podcast or in any linked materials. If you think you may have a medical emergency, call your doctor or emergency services immediately. Neither Mahela Raguse nor the publisher of this contact takes responsibility for the possible health consequences of any person or persons reading or listening or following the information in educational content.